It is a hump day, Menace Army. It is Wednesday, the hump day. It's a hump day because the week goes like this. And in the middle sits a Wednesday, and that is the hump of the week, if you didn't know. But we like to make it a degenerate term, so it's hump day. Get your freak on. March 20th. It's These months are flying by. It's just fucking crazy. We're going to be like, it's going to be the summer before you know it, and then we're going to be on the heels of football season. And I'm here for it because this football season is going to be a wild one. So much unknown. We got a lot to talk about. Pro Day's going on right now at Ohio State. They obviously are in the midst of spring ball, and it's NFL draft silly season. Chris, how's your week going? Good. Good week. Um, my guy, BM5, just stopped by. You got it. Got it. Crown Blackberry in the building. Got Shout it. out, BM5 Edits. Came through and got Chris his unicorn. You know, I like my whiskey a little fruity. <laughs> <laughs> got him his... Uh, <laughs> the drink that he can drink with everyone's wife. <laughs> the mythical beast. The mythical beast. You it know is. that it's always good when you say, oh, Chris really Chris really wants to try a Crown Royal Blackberry. And the first thing people say is, oh, you'll love it. My, right. It's my wife's favorite. Mm-hmm. Dude, my mom, thrilled. Thrilled. She is excited. <laughs> <laughs> but this is also the man takes one shot of bourbon and can't even say his own name. So well, that, that bullet shit is giving me PTSD, dog. It's yeah. still ringing bells. Well, of all the bourbons to shoot, I don't know that I would have picked bullet or drink in general. I'm not a huge bullet fan, but it's not, I mean, it's not bad, right? but especially for a guy who doesn't drink bourbon, I don't know if I would have went that route. Yeah. You know, not, not, not really my thing, but how's your week going? Good brother. It's going good, man. Workouts have been great. I feel good. I can see my body transforming. I'm getting in better shape. That's an Um, addicting feeling. Bourbon and ball was awesome last night. I drank, let's see. I drank McKenna 10 year uh, bottled and bond. It was outstanding. I don't know that I've ever had it before. I have two bottles of it. So I had, and I had our new bourbon glasses that will be on the site here in the, about a week, hopefully, once we iron out all the details. But we have this wide mouth bourbon glass, and I poured what I, is nor, a normal pour, I thought, but it's just it's so much bigger so than the wide. normal glass that, like, I'm like 40 <laughs> minutes in, I haven't even finished it, and I'm like, holy shit, that's a lot of bourbon. And I poured the second one. And I obviously didn't finish that by the end of the breakdown. And then by the, at the end of that, I looked, and it was like a third of the bottle was gone. I was like, holy shit. Jeez. That's, a, that's a big glass. So if you order the wide mouth when we put it out there, just know that's like two glasses. <laughs> but it was really fun. And all I got to say is that Michigan defense is, was fucking insane. Insane. I mean, that you want to know why Michigan won a natty? It was because of that defense. And yeah. I just broke down the offense, the, the breakdown before. Michigan's defense last year, Wow. And those D tackles they had, double wow. Like, holy shit. And Michael Penix Jr. was hot ass. I mean, two-pack of ass, well, as, like, as you say. It's it's like, can, do you judge him off going against the best defense in college Well, football? that's the thing, right? So so I've been back and forth about this because he, he really made me say he is not a first-round quarterback. Then I had to sit there and say, all right, that was the best defense he faced in the biggest game of his entire life. Shouldn't that be a red flag? Like, that is when a first-round quarterback should show you why he's a first-round quarterback. And he was awful. So, I'm mm. I'm in a bad place with Michael Penix Jr. right now. Um, his draft stock just plummeted. One game, I'm going to go back and watch a couple more so maybe I can fall back in love with him. But it was a really fun watch. Um, even if you're a Buckeye fan, it's good to know that some of that defense is gone. <laughs> some of them exited the building. But they're going to be really good on defense next year, too. I hate to break it to you. But I'm ready. I'm ready to get into it. I'm gonna. All right, let's do it, Lugi. Let them know what time it is, Bubba. Get to the show. Um, just sticking on on the Michael Penix draft thing right now. Yeah, I know you said that that maybe is a little bit of a red flag, but should it be? I mean, we've watched first round after first rounder every year. The first time they have to face. A real NFL defense, they always struggle. I mean, Caleb Williams is about to go number one overall. Oh, no doubt. And against Notre Dame, he it was, was all his fault. Yeah, he was terrible. I mean, everyone has bad games, right? We JJ mm-hmm. had a bad game against Bowling Green of all teams. Like, everyone's had a bad game at some point. So you can't just evaluate him on that game. But when you watch that game, the coaches film, it's hard not to. <laughs> it's just, you just get so like like entrenched di- in it. Yeah, and just disgusted. You're like, this guy's a first rounder? And it could, it's just a bad day. And I could pull up one of his games, like his game against Oregon, which we, I broke down. I'm going to go back and rewatch my own breakdown because I need to I need to see it again. Because yeah. right now he's a third-round quarterback to me. And I know that's dramatic and an overreaction, and he's not. But if you just watch that game, oh, God. 
Because you know what it reminds me of, and, and I will tie everything in the world back to Drew Aller. I think a lot of Ohio State and Michigan fans both will say that Drew Aller's not very good, and they only watch Drew against Michigan and Ohio State, right. two of the top five defenses in the country. Yeah, And it's like Drew, outside of those two schools, put a lot of really good things on tape to where I think he's going to be a first-rounder at some point, but a lot of people are like, oh, Drew Aller's not it. It's like, well, damn, like, are you going to give your defense credit for stopping down a talented individual, or was every single mistake self-inflicted? Right, and, and at, at the same time, he might not be it yet like yeah, 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 does yeah. he have the tools does he have the talent and can he get coached and developed into a first rounder my answer for drew aller is yes i think so he's got to show me a lot but i think it's there will it happen yeah. that's to be yet to be seen but what well, he wasn't there as a what a sophomore redshirt freshman yeah, against right? those schools against those schools mm-hmm. so we'll see he's got time yeah, Michael and he's Penix got is an interesting case though because he is old he is old yeah. and i honestly the most disheartening thing was I don't like how he throws the football. Like, fundamentally, I don't like how he throws it. Never mind the fact he performed bad. He missed a bunch of throws. He he did not. I mean, he had two first-round receivers, and I just don't like how he throws it. His mechanics are wicked, bro. Yeah, like, just, like brutal. And it's funny because a lot of times, like, when we see left-handed quarterbacks throw the football, you, like, don't really realize it. But I, I've done the, the exercise where I, like, put Michael Penix's throwing in, in a mirror. So it's like you see the right-handed version, and it just looks a little wicked. Yeah. So it doesn't quite look right. Um, But the ball placement had been there for most of the year. Yeah, it was. Um, and that's what I mean. Issue. You can't judge him on just that game. But I haven't watched Michael Penix since, like, December. Yeah. And now I watch that one game, and I'm like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I told I see someone in the chat mentioning Bo Nix. I told Zach I don't want to break down Bo Nix. I Bo Nix is like my Santa Claus. I love Bo Nix. I don't think Bo Nix is going to be a good pro at all. But I want Zach and everybody else to let me think that Bo Nix is real for just a little bit longer before everything comes off. I mean, yeah, and and I know, I know this is a dramatic reaction because I just watched one of his worst games of his career. But I I think JJ's the QB four right now. Um, yeah, we're going to jump into that in, in a sec. Zach, I, I brought this video for you. This video is all for you. We've got a uh, German defensive backs, the this German is, all pro defensive. Like, this backs is just wild going up against Tyreek Hill. <laughs> just, I mean, <laughs> making him, them look so stupid, <laughs> but like, also what the fuck is that route? Like what? A, that was an, an out and up. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I one-on-ones are awesome. Cause you see guys compete. I used to tell my guys, no double moves ever. No double moves. Like I went on the first one. Well, yeah. And, and, and if a, if a corner, if they start sitting on you, just you run a go route, like cook their ass on a go route. Double moves are like, they're great for in games. If you max protect, but double moves in one-on-ones and you see it at every rivals camp. It's like, Oh, he, he cooked him. It's like, he just ran a, ran a fucking in and out and up. Like he was running backyard football shit, like intramurals. Like it, it's just, it's, but anyways, he, he cooked him on the out too. So it's not like he wouldn't have cooked him either way, but it's what it is. I mean, European football players trying to guard the, the fastest receiver in the NFL. Come on. You knew that was going to be a bloodbath. And like he was running half speed. It was, it, it is funny though. I know the NFL is so like hell bent on like the globalization. Um, one of the Browns players maybe leaked that they'll be playing in Brazil this year, that they'll, they'll be the team. That'd be awesome. So that'll be cool. I just know. Menace to Brazil. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that'd be something, bro. I'm just saying. I heard Brazil is beautiful. Yeah, the the women in Brazil. Uh, well, I wasn't talking about the women, but they they too are beautiful. But the the countryside, the beaches, I've heard are incredible. I was just thinking about like what every pro athlete's weakness is. It feels like you know, <laughs> beaches and bitches. Yeah, <laughs> double B's. Um, your boy Jim Harbaugh. You know, he's moving out to L.A. Decided he was going to have a garage sale <laughs> at his at his place. Do you know what? The more the more that I hear about Jim being weird, this is the most Jim Harbaugh thing, the more I kind of like him. But it's like, I don't understand people that have millions of dollars that do shit like this. Like, donate that shit. Get a tax break and help some people out. Are you going to sell, like, clothes you don't want to wear anymore? Why? You need a couple hundred bucks? Yeah. What's he going to make, 15 million a year or something crazy? Like, do you really need that? what, maybe $1,000 that you're going to make off the garage sale? I, that, that shit pisses me off. You give me a garage sale at a really fucking big house, I'm going to go take a piss on all the clothes. Like, <laughs> donate the clothes. Hey, is that former wide receiver coach Zach Smith pissing on some khakis? <laughs> <laughs> I'm for real. Like, donate it. There's people that need clothes. You're right. You fucking rich bastard. 
But it's also just a Jim Harbaugh thing, such, bro. He's right, just so unaware, bro. Like, I don't think he's being an asshole. I no, just think no. he's so unaware. Yeah, he lives in a world of his own. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's truly the most unaware. Like, just he's he's on Mars. He's a Martian. The rest, the rest of us are humans. It's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Harbaugh the Martian. Dog, some of this stuff, he's got like all his snow globes, if you zoom in. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? He's sewing a whole bunch of snow gloves. Snow gloves. Bro. He's got a sewing machine. A lamp. A there's a fucking, what is that called? A, a vapor. You know, you put like oil in it and it makes vapor to like smell, make your house smell good. He's got a lava lamp. He's got like what looks like a fucking wedding dress. I mean, this is wild. A, a Michigan football t-shirt. A gray <laughs> Michigan football t-shirt. Looks like this Karen right here is about to buy it. Oh my goodness, bro. I wonder how Jim Harbaugh decorates his room. Dude, he's got a fucking thermos. <laughs> he's selling a thermos. Yeah, dude. What are we doing, Jim? I you really, what are you char char charging five bucks for that? Well, you really need that five, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I'm stealing Jim. I, I don't, I don't think he'll press charges. I'm stealing <laughs> no. from him. Like I'm taking all these snow. Gloves. He won't even know if you paid. He'll forget <laughs> that you have to do that. He absolutely will. You know, shout out to uh, Mr. Connor Steins himself. Zach, this one was for you. We got quarterback series last year. Omaha Productions, obviously Manning and Netflix did that. This year, we've got receivers. Man, this shit is going to be wild. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. It's going to be like the quarterback one, but it's going to be like, I don't know. It's going to be, be kind of like uh, MTV real world. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it's if they truly do it, you're going to see some fun, exciting degeneracy. It's really cool. I mean, last year, we, were, we had to watch Kirk Cousins on the screen. This year... We're getting Adams, uh, Justin Jefferson, George Kittle. That'll be really cool. Uh, Debo Samuel and St. Brown. I mean, that that's a great group. Yeah, I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be entertaining. I like what they're doing. I mean, they're they're showing you the personal side of these celebrities, mm -hmm. right? These superstar athletes, and I think it's gonna be great. I can't wait to see how much cooler receivers are than uh, the quarterback. Oh my god, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> that's the big thing. Um, Ohio State basketball contracts. Mister Josh Diebler got his deal, and I think someone dropped. Yeah, it's weird. So there's a picture of someone holding a piece of paper with his contract on it. Like they took a picture of it with their phone. And it's like, yeah. where did they get this? Like did Bjork just like accidentally it fell out of his briefcase and someone found it? Yeah. It's like a weird thing, weird way for it to get out. Head coach Jake Diebler contract terms. Um, his base salary is two and a half million dollars. If he wins the Big Ten or a conference co-champion, he gets twenty five thousand dollars. Winner of Big Ten conference tournament gets fifty bands. Um, first round of the tournament, 25 bands, sweet 16, 50 bands, elite, wait, <laughs> elite eight, 75,000. And then final four, a hundred thousand. If you win the whole damn thing, 250,000, the incentives felt a little low, but you know, first yeah, I'm gonna be honest, that motherfucker wins a natty, give him 3 million. <laughs> like, That's what I'm saying. That's well, what I would say. But he'll get it in, in, in the next contract if he wins a natty. Yeah. But I, I did like that, you know, and they do this in coaches' contracts. They put team GPAs in there. Like if he gets above a 3.0, he gets 50 grand. Above a 3.5, he gets 100 grand. I mean, it's it's an incentivized contract. I don't know how it compares to other basketball coaches because I don't follow basketball. But me either. But first time head coach for the Buckeyes, 2.5 million with you know half a million in incentives on the table. I, I think that's that's decent. Did you get your contract terms handed to you like that? Just like a piece of paper said, this is everything. Like I, I'm just trying to. I'm. I mean, it was about the piece of paper just floating around. Yeah, th this this looks like it's just um something that they they gave him in negotiation. Like like here's what we're offering because that's not the contract. The contract is like a, a bunch of, of fucking legal jargon yeah. and 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 just. A, I mean, it has all that info in there, but it'll use a bunch of words like if the parties party uh, known as coach. Like it has all this legal shit in there. Yeah. That I don't even understand, but you can read it and be like, okay, so 50 grand if we make it to the Sweet 16. So Got they give it. you like the legal bullshit and then they give you one of those? Yeah, like they, they, they'll hand, well, they didn't give me one of those. It's just, you just had to read the contract or have your agent read through it. Got you. Uh, again, just loose, loose paper laying around. Um, RG3 spoke about Caleb Williams, obviously, uh, you know, the projected number one overall pick. He said Caleb Williams should pull an Eli Manning and demand that the Chicago Bears do not draft him number one overall. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, I don't disagree. Look what the Bears did to Justin Fields. And I think the Bears will do that to whoever they have at quarterback. It'll just, no matter, maybe it won't be as bad as Justin Fields. If you, But if a quarterback goes to Chicago right now, they're going to play worse than almost anywhere else in the league. It's like, immediately, you're going to look like you're not as good as you actually are. I'm, 
I mean, I, I would, if I'm him, I want to get drafted number one overall. I may say I'll never play for the bears, but I want that, that, uh, that contract. Sign, right. Yeah. I want that salary that's locked in for the number one overall pick. So it'll be a sign and trade. I mean, it's, it's no different, right? Whether you say, I don't want to be drafted by them. And then they don't draft you and someone else does. You make less money. Or you say, I don't want to play for them. They draft you, you make the money and they trade you to someone who would have drafted you. I disagree with you and RG3, bro. I, you know, honestly, I think the best thing for Caleb Williams is I think the Bears are so desperately trying to prove that they didn't wrong Justin Fields. So they're going to do everything they fucking can to get this right. Um, he's walking into weapons. They have $30 million in cap space. I mean, he's going to have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen and DeAndre Swift all right there and Cole Komet. Those are all guys that are top 10 potential in their positions. Well, yeah. <laughs> and you have that other pick. Like, yeah. Like, he's I mean, walking to a great situation for well, number compared one to Justin pick. Fe- Compared to Justin Ex- Fields. Exactly. I mean, exactly. this is a. I mean, it's it's just wild. It's wild they drafted a guy as high as they drafted Justin and didn't make any moves to help him. Mm-hmm. The minute they get rid of him, they start making moves to help probably Caleb Williams. It's like, well, what the fuck were you doing the first time? And they want to... Like, why even draft Justin Fields if you're not going to give him the tools he needs to be successful? What's the point? It's almost that they want to prove they got it right. Yeah. Like, that's what it's going to be. They're gonna So they're going to go overkill. So if, if Caleb Williams fails, I think it'll only be on Caleb Williams. That's fair. And that's different than Justin Fields. It is very different than Justin Fields. But Justin also has to prove it, right? Oh, yeah. He has sure. to go to Pittsburgh. He has to eventually win the job from Russ, even if it's not this year, maybe the next year. And then he's got to go become like perform well in the NFL. And if he does, it's like, damn, Chicago really held this man down for that long. Mm-hmm. Held him down. <laughs> All right, bro, the J.J. Rumors. So yeah, this, is- this is the part of Silly Season where right around, it usually goes combine pro day workouts, and then you get – the drastic leapers, I'll call them. Now, the commanders have interest in J.J. McCarthy with the second overall pick. That's Schultz, an NFL guy, insider guy. Washington is flying out to Ann Arbor to have dinner with McCarthy the night before his pro day. There was a time just two weeks ago where social media thought he was a day two pick. Uh, Let's not, and I'm not saying that's not true. I mean, it might be true. I think that's wild. I have him as QB4. But you also got to do your homework, right? If you're the commanders, you don't want to just say, oh, we're taking Drake May, done. No, you want to put in the time and really evaluate those top four quarterbacks and make sure. But I I am not such a drunk that I forget. One year ago, when Bill Levis was a day two pick, and right around now, it started being rumored and discussed, and, and there was reports coming from all these fucking idiots that he was a top five pick. And then... It even went as far as he was the odds-on favorite to be the number one overall pick. Yeah, it got be- real weird because there, of the okay. silly season. So oh. do not forget, these stupid motherfuckers told you that Will Levis was most likely to be the number one overall pick at one point, and that some bitch was a day two draft pick. Don't forget that happened. I'm not saying that's going to be JJ, but if it is, it's just draft silly season. This is what they do. It's like we're really we're really up in things right now, and the fact so it's it's agents, it's GMs trying to throw trails off, and it's also just insiders trying to get clicks all at the same time, and it results in this fucking beast that is silly season. What comes next, Zach? So right now is the really high highs. What comes next is if a team wants JJ at around pick fifteen, you'll start to hear all the character assassination. Yeah, well. I don't think they can have characteristics. I think this kid's a great kid. But dog, whoa, well, CJ Stroud, great kid. Justin Fields, great kid. Both got their character. They tried to attack the character. Not their character, their work ethic, maybe. No one said they're bad kids. Oh, and, and no, not not bad kids, but more in terms of um not like the best kind of fit. Like intelligence rubs people the wrong way. Yeah, they they tried their intelligence, they tried their work ethic. Not, I mean, no one said they were bad kids. Now, JJ, they, they can absolutely do that. Yeah. I agree with you on that. They can absolutely come out and say, oh, you know what? His football IQ is not very high because they didn't have a complicated offense at Michigan, which, by the way, I, I'm into. Like, how hard was it for him to process information in the throw game? It was all fucking play action and nakeds and quick game. Like, they didn't have a complicated throw game. And how will he react to an NFL throw game? Like, learning it all, taking it all in. Um, we don't know. And did he attend the Manning passing camp? That's what we really need to know. he was 12 years old. Some, we need a deep dive, and we need to know, when J.J. was in middle school, did he go to the Manning passing academy? Because if not, Peyton is going to be really pissed, and he's going to try to bury the kid. That's the one, man. There was that whole group that came out and said, C.J. slided the Mannings. Disrespectful. 
didn't call back. Like, what the fuck? And that was, and, and Bill Levis went. And that's, that, that's what happened. And Bill Levis also went in the second round. Yeah. Let's not forget. I was talking to someone else and I called him Bill Levis and I got the oddest look and I kept calling him and it, it, it dawned upon me that, oh, he's not Bill Levis to the whole world. He is actually Will Levis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. We just <laughs> you call forgot him. too. We just call him that. Yeah. <laughs> and people are like, who the fuck is Bill Levis? I don't know if you guys know, but Bill is a common name for got people named William. That's that's real. Uh, Zach, want to get a quick word from our partner and then come back? Let's do this. it. We'll be right back after this. What's up, Menace Army? Got to tell you about it. I've told you about it a hundred times. It's all about Miracle Made sheets. Did you know your the, the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night. It's self-cooling for better quality sleep, self-cleaning. These sheets are infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. Comfort and quality. They're the best, I always say, the best sheets I've ever owned. Designed for your skin. Try miracle.com slash menace. Try miracle.com slash menace. And you get 20% off. You, it's already, if you say, if you order today, you already can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code menace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. The best sheets you've ever owned for way cheaper than they should be. Go check them out. I'm just telling you, I, I, I say it every time. I, 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 it's, it's not a sales pitch. They are incredible. PFF gave their uh, wide receiver, second round wide receiver landing spots. Mm. I thought this was really interesting just because. Oh, no. Oh, no. There it is. For, I want to start with the funniest thing about all this. Lab McConkie to the Patriots in a mock <laughs> draft is just classic i mean it's just so racist right yeah it's like oh he's just like uh julian edelman <laughs> like what okay i get it he's a white guy if you're white and a little bit undersized you're going to the patriots now if you're white and over six foot rams yeah for sure <laughs> i mean this this is all fun it's all silly season but they had to fucking put roman <laughs> wilson to the browns they had to put roman wilson to the browns they had really to. they had to but troy franklin to kansas city i think that's a good fit that's a that's a great fit for him Keon Coleman to the Texans, mm -hmm. I give, think. Give CJ a little freaky freak. Yeah, I think that's ideal. Um, other, other than that, I just I just found it interesting because we talked about the numbers yesterday about, what, eight guys in the first two rounds? Yeah. PFF seems to think the whole fucking wide receiver class is going to be drafted in the second round. <laughs> I, I think it's a it's a it's definitely a receiver-heavy draft this year. Yeah, it's eight second-round receivers. That feels like a lot. <laughs> It is a lot, and, uh, and and Ricky Pearsall is the one that we don't talk about uh, enough. But that's he's from your from your alma mater, man. Yeah, that's the uh, that's also should have been at Arizona State with yeah. Johnny Wilson, Jaden Daniels, Chip Trainum. Like you talk about a team that could have been loaded. Yeah, they were loaded. You yeah. imagine that offense, Chip Trainum. Yeah, Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner, throwing to Johnny Wilson and Ricky Pearsall, like wild. And Chip in the back of the Pac-12. I mean, I mean, but. Again, like Herm was cheating his ass off. Oh, yeah. Like that group, I think, beat Justin Herbert, didn't they? Uh, they might have. They beat some, but they. I they, remember Jaden Daniels' freshman year because my brother went to Arizona State for a year. And so he loves Arizona State. And he was talking about this freshman quarterback. And I watched him a couple times and I was like, this kid is fucking talented. Yeah, he, like, how do you end up at Arizona State? Well, lo and behold, we found out how and he got his ass out of there. And it's going to happen again because Rashada. Built the exact same as Daniels. He is on the way to LSU at some point. Yeah, I just made that up. That is uh, that is no inside sourcing. Um, the Ohio State Pro Day starts at started at eleven thirty. It's going on right now. So, uh, what are you expecting here from the from the buzz of the quarterbacks? Oh, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Give us. Will Howard is incredible. He's a future first round pick. NFL scouts were wowed with his arm strength. You're going to hear it all. Devin Brown struggled. Like the narratives are going to come out the, yeah. and they're all preconceived notions. I promised you the article's already written. It's already written. They're just waiting to hit send. Yeah. I, I wish that it was, it was televised the way they used to tell. I mean, they used to televise the Ohio State Pro Day every year. Did they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, I mean, yeah. I was there. So, well, they, I mean, even going back, Justin Fields Pro Day got fucking televised. And that's how I got the clips to compare to the Zach Wilson clips. Yeah. Um, but there is the, the loudness about Malik Neighbors continues because Marvin has not done anything, not, not done any testing. Um, and I guess Marvin's camp is telling everybody, like, we don't really care about the training side of it. We don't care about running the 40. We want to train to play football. No doubt. I think it's it great is. because the nine teams he met with in Indianapolis, he flat out asked them. 
He said, what do you need to see from me at Pro Day? And you know what those nine teams said? Nothing. <laughs> we don't need to see a damn thing. We good over here. Like, the kid is doing what he should do. Yeah. He asked the teams, like, hey, do you, do you guys need to see anything? Because I'll do it if you, need me to de- if you need to see anything. But if not, I'm, I'm trying to come in ready to play football. So I'm training like a football player. I'm not training like a combine athlete. Like a track athlete. Because they do. I mean, I've been down to Exos multiple times down in South Florida when I had guys training there. And you watch, and all they're doing is training for the testing. They're not training. I mean, they, they catch jugs and stuff, but they're not training route running. They're not, I mean, a little bit because they have to run routes, but they're they're working on the routes that they they're not training like a football player. They're training for the combine. I love that he's doing it, and I love the fact that he asked them mm-hmm. because he's like, listen, if you need to see something, I'm not like afraid to do it. I'm not trying to protect myself. I'm just trying to train like a football player. And but let you let me know if you need to see something. And they all said. We good, homie. <laughs> the film speaks, and it speaks loud. <laughs> we done seen enough. No, I love it. That's really that's really good for him. So, um, also, oh, do you? Someone in the chat asked, "Do you think Harbaugh is at Ohio State's pro day today?" Oh, that would be fucking wild. <laughs> oh, you imagine him walking in? Oh, buddy. Maybe that's why they're not televising it. <laughs> they're not televising it so they can't have a shot of Ryan Day talking to Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, that's the photo that I wanted though. Because, like, if you're, if you're, I mean, Ryan would be nice to him. Then you yeah. have the fan base talking about, oh, he doesn't understand. Right. <laughs> Love it. Um, also, Bama's having their pro day today as well. Mm-hmm. Um, two big names, Kool Aid McKinstry and Terry Arnold. Who do you think gets drafted first? Who do you like more? I like Kool Aid by far. He was my favorite corner in the country. Him one, probably Will Johnson two. <laughs> it's going to be nuts when Arnold goes 10 picks ahead of him. It might be. That's the, I haven't paid attention to the combine silliness, like no, what, what they ran in 40s and shit like that. But I agree because I think cool. I think Kool Aid's better. I but, think Kool Aid's a dude. Plus, he's got a better name. That matters. Cool ass name. Like who the fuck names your kid Kool Aid? I'm sure that's not his legal name, yeah, right? That's his nickname. It's got to be a nickname. Kool Aid. But what the fuck, Kool Aid? <laughs> we went with Kool Aid. Why? Because he drank a lot of Kool Aid. Who didn't? He had the juice. Who did? He got the juice. I like it. Fuck it. Juice. I fuck with it. Yeah, Why he does he not have an NIL deal? I need to know. That's what I'm saying. That was like the easiest NIL setup ever. Right. It's like the, the coldest. Yeah. The like coldest. the coldest Crawford got the yeah, AC. HVAC, yeah. yeah. The HVAC company. Like how does Kool-Aid. Or, fuck it. And he's not in college anymore. He needs an endorsement deal. Mm-hmm. Like put that, put that motherfucker and let him jump through a wall. And the fucking Kool-Aid man is literally on an island. That's one of the things. Yeah. And it's one a, of the runs. That's what I'm saying this is Kool-Aid too, Island. That's amazing. This is too perfect. We need to contact Kool Aid and get this done. Yeah, the company, not the kid. <laughs> both or both. Talk to talk to all of them. Now, I've been I've been looking at a lot of, of mock drafts, and they've got Arnold going ahead of Kool Aid. And to me, it's surprising, but at the same time, like I've also watched corners get misevaled the entire time. Oh, all for, the time for forever. So all the time. Um, that that kind of is what it is. I want to ask your thoughts on this, and then I want to get some super chats. Talk Missouri already wrapped up spring ball. It's wild. <laughs> Absolutely wild. They're like, done. They had is, their. It is March what twentieth. They had their black and gold game. It's over, dog. Hey, shout out to them. <laughs> I mean, it just it. I I don't like it at all mm-hmm. because you're discounting how critical winter the winter conditioning, winter strength training is. I mean, you shorten that to what? I, I guess you can make it up on the back end. I did, I like the timing that most teams do it. It gives you a solid like probably ten week winter program. Really, probably eight weeks because you get a week off after the season. But yeah. a nice eight-week program. Then you do spring ball for five weeks or six, like Ohio State, if you ha- have spring break in there. Then you come back, and it's time to get to summer. I, I That's wild. So they're done now. What do they do? <laughs> uh, they're chilling. And I guess Drink said that um, that now his coaches don't have to come in till after 8-15 so they can drop <sighs> their kids off at school. Fucking hell. I wish. What a world. One day. One day. You know what's really crazy, Chris? I just thought about this. So at Ohio State, with Ur- this is with Urban Meyer. I'm sure Ryan does something similar. During the season, you take your kids to school on Friday, right? Mm-hmm. If it's a home game, you come in at like 9. So you could take your kids to school. And he, he felt like it was important because you're in the, in the office all week. You barely see your family Wednesday night, maybe Thursday night, and then Friday morning you take them to school. But then the offseason comes, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you ain't doing that shit no more. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, you're going to see him tonight. It's like, well, it's still kind of a – Good thing to take my kid to school and bond with them. Like, yeah. <laughs> what? It's, it's fuck them kids in the off season. Mm-hmm. Fuck them kids in the off season. That's real. That's real. You know, build building the program. But Drink said that the reason they do the early spring ball is to avoid 
having spring break in the middle of spring ball because he thinks that contributes to injuries. My no, concern it, was I, more about the, I mean, re- really the winter, not giving your body enough time to rest and then going straight into spring ball, but I don't know what. Well, no, I mean, they have plenty of time to rest. It's, it's To me, it's about shortening the win- winter strength and conditioning because you, okay. you put on a lot of strength in the winter. And then in the, in, after spring ball, it's all about football skills, right? Speed, change of direction, getting shredded, getting in great shape. But in the winter, you're just, I mean, you're trying to get strong. Yeah. But I, I agree with that. I mean, that's why you need to have a very, very well thought out, calculated plan when you come back from spring ball. And honestly, Mickey Marotti was outstanding about it. I mean, we, I can't even, I don't even remember a soft tissue injury coming off of spring break, which that's your concern, right? You got your, you, what, nine days off and you come back and pull a hammy because you're not ready. You're not in football shape. That's your, that's your worry. Yeah, especially with all the hamstring issues. I know this year, Zach, Ohio State did a uh, not quite a practice, but maybe a workout on Monday. And then they had yeah. their final acclimation period for spring ball on a Tuesday. Yeah, and it's a scaled back practice just because you're trying to yeah. make sure Ease you people like get back onto the highway. Yeah, you're trying to beat spring break out of them, basically. <laughs> sweat it out, big fella. Sweat, sweat it out. out. All the shit you put in your body that we don't want to know about, sweat it out. It was a great interview. Um, it was uh, Pate and Drinkovich, and Drinkovich, and I felt like I was watching like Kirby's cousin. <laughs> yeah. That's what drink sounds and feels like yeah, for it's sure. Like, it's like yeah. the weird cousin that wants to be like Kirby so bad, but a couple things are off. And now he's owned that he's not Kirby. So that was uh, that was cool. Zach, some super chats and new members, guys. Fifty members in one day. Oh, I forgot amazing. to mention it. Fifty members yesterday. So what? Here's what it is. People have asked. There's now for our, for our show. You can become a a. a a member of our YouTube channel, an official member of Menace Army. It's separate from the VIP platform where we offer all those extra benefits. This is solely for membership into the Army on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You get emojis, uh, custom emojis. You you get a what's it, an AVI. Yeah. And that AVI, as you kind of continue to be a, a member, it changes and it becomes like a flex. Like, no, don't talk to me. I'm a 24-month member over here, and I, I got this badass emoji. You've been here, and it's like yeah. it's like a good way too to like identify the trolls from the non trolls in the chat yeah. too, because like oh like, and like you support the channel. We're we're still working on the full the full Experience. rollout of what it's going to be, but there's going to be things like after the hour mark, the last thirty minutes are going to be the chat is only for members, and there there might be some member exclusive shows. We're going to do some cool stuff with it. So if you're interested, support the channel. Go go sign up. Cool extra way to be supportive. Yeah. So 100% here for it. Kaylin, thank you for becoming a member. Look at that, over 50. Uh, Elks, thanks for the two. Sorry, Zach. Zach, sorry for your team's, what, lose last night to OSU? Both your teams lost to Ohio State? Who? I don't know. Oh. Oh, because oh, they were talking about the dude from Cornell looks like me. Oh. They said he was a bald old dude. <laughs> they said, this is like Zach playing pickup basketball. <laughs> I was lost there for a sec. Yeah, well, you don't yeah. pay attention to the group chat. No, I, no, I was. Hey, I was, remember that army? Wait, I was in there this morning. Dropped off a real good nugget. It doesn't mean you pay attention to it. You might uh, drop shit in there every now and then. No, I mean, I, yeah, you're right. I know. Keel, thanks for the ten. Pitts lineup of Hall of Famers is crazy. Revis, Dorsett, Darnold, Larry, Fitz, and Kenny Pickett. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kenny Pickett's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Um, for like the University of Pitt. Oh, what? No. Caleb, thanks for the five. Only been watching regularly now for about four weeks, but had to become a member to truly be a part of Menace Army. Oh, here you go. You want to join the army? It's four ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, thanks for the twenty. What's up, Zach and Chris? My wife and I love the show. I usually uh, stream it later due to work. Wanted to see if you guys could give my wife Lindsay a shout out for her birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Lindsay! Come watch the show. Yeah, and her birthday falls on a hump day. Oh shit! Better give her that good, good. Put that thing in sport mode, and I'm it, just like saying it's freak week. I'm talking like back shot delivery development. <laughs> yeah, get it right. You got it right. Yeah. I'm just saying. Hopefully you sign up for Blue Chew, pop a couple of them, and go to town. <laughs> you get that like Cookie Monster, like the Blue Chew Monster. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great ad idea for them. <laughs> uh, Justice, thanks for the ten. I haven't uh, had the dominoes fall correctly yet, but I'm gonna make a live show one day. No luck for me since Ohio State uh, UGA watch party. How was what the McKenna tenure? Ooh, just passed it on a what? 
four <laughs> larceny barrel proof. Ooh, so you, you he he picked the, the larceny barrel proof over it. I haven't had that yet, but the McKenna was really good. I, I'm a big fan. <clears throat> I don't know enough about bourbon, but it sounds like all like dope shit. Yeah, it's all good shit. I feel like about bourbon, how you feel about shoes when I would like talk about like crazy shoes that like I'm, I'm going on the adventure to go hunt. Yeah, it kind of feels like this is this is like the um the old head version of that. Yeah. Aiden, thanks for the two. If Caleb goes back to Bama, will he have to sit? There's a rumor out there that Caleb uh, Downs is going back to Bama. It's only because the fucking Proctor <laughs> is, is going Caleb. back. <laughs> Caleb Downs is not going anywhere. And no, I don't think they, I don't think you can can sit him anymore. I don't even think that's the thing. No, remember the NCAA just we, I just covered it last week. The NCAA just released their official yeah. guidelines. You can go in the portal as many times as you want, and right. you're eligible forever. I'm talking about like. AARP, like you're eligible. <laughs> like you, you've got eligible. Everybody in this chat has eligibility left. Um, Chris, my guy, thanks for the five. My guys, the re the rebrand is absolutely sick. We not claiming Steelers though. <laughs> Cleveland Heights, high black and gold. Can't wait to wrap it. Army, by the way, fuck team up north. I'm with you. So we're, we're going to do our color rush stuff probably this weekend. So we'll be able to next probably on Monday. I'll I'll I'll. I'll Put it all on the site so you'll be able to get some other colors because I get it. If you're not, I mean, I love the colors. I don't associate them with Pittsburgh. I fucking hate the Steelers, so I, so I still rock it. You ain't got no haters who ain't popping. That's for sure. We'll get you some other colors though. Shout out to uh, to my goat, Justin Fields and Mike Tomlin. <laughs> DJ, thanks for the five. Saban is the goat. Convinces players to transfer, spy, come back with intel. All legally, and they all got raises, all for the greater good of the town. Yeah, he's really worried about Iowa. Really wanted the intel on the Hawkeyes. <laughs> How could you be that bad on offense? Like they, Caden Proctor went to Iowa for what two months, and yeah. he was like, "Yo, fuck this." I think what one spring practice, but like he had to like we we saw inside the Bama program from my guy. When he went and visited. Oh, like, yeah, all the NFL jerseys. And not only that, like the hand, like homemade, everything is homemade food, just incredible dining. Caden Proctor went to that first training table. It was like fucking hot dogs. And he's like, yo, what is this shit? You like think they got farm to table in Iowa? No, I mean, they might have like a bunch of beef. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big motherfucker. He likes food. He does. He wants to get some creme brulee. Bro, Kirk Martin is so funny, bro. He's, he always talks about how, like, he's such a fat lineman. Like, Kate Proctor's just fat. <laughs> he's going to be really good. He's going to be a lottery pick. You think so? Like, lottery yeah. in, like, top 15? Oh, yeah. Top, I think he's going to be top five. Top five? Maybe top 10. He, I mean, playing a lot as a freshman means something. Starting at Bama as a freshman at left tackle. Yeah. Or, he was like, I, okay. Wild. Right, yeah. Charles, thanks for the five. Any chance Tony Alford gets James Peoples to follow him to Michigan? Um, James Peoples' mom is from Youngstown, Ohio, and was a super ath athlete in high school and in college. There's always a chance, right? I, I think of the room, that's the one that you kind of risk losing. Um, but I think, you know, honestly, like making the running backs feel like they're a part of the interview process for Ryan Day, I think is a great move. Yeah, so right? there's, there's a reason he's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. It's to give them ownership and make them want to stay because that's that's the guy they like. Yeah, because like if if someone it'll be really fucked up if they're like we want this guy and he's like ah fuck that guy we're gonna hire this guy and they're like we hated that guy yeah and then it's like I'm out of here I'm going yeah. to Michigan so honestly I think I think it's how Ryan handles the running back room and I think that's part probably part of why he insisted on coaching them right yeah. now oh yeah it's to it's stop the bleeding right I mean those kids love Tony Alford he leaves God forbid they get disgruntled because nowadays you can just deuce it up peace on out. Literally anytime, anywhere, for any amount of money, you can skedaddle. Yep. Uh, Jeff, thank you for becoming a member. Shout out to the member gang. Member gang. Um, Jason, oh, we're working <laughs> on it. It's been real weird this morning. Menace to Merch is still not working, guys. I want the new merch. So it's menace to merch.shopify. They're working on linking our domains right now, but they said there was some DNS. Issue. If you go to my Twitter, in, 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 in if you go to my Twitter page and go to the replies, I just sent it to somebody said, oh, the site's down, and I sent them the actual link, and it worked. Yeah, so if any website experts know about DNS, I guess that's the current issue that I'm trying to solve. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't get it. 
Yeah, but if you if you add dot Shopify yeah. after it, it works. The link's on my Twitter. We'll put the link in the bio of the show if we didn't already. Yeah, I, I'll I'll do that. It's on yesterday's show as well. The yeah. correct the correct thing. Hopefully, only for a day longer. So, my guy Mick, thank you for becoming a member. You're a legend. Another legend in the chat. Appreciate you, Ref. Thanks for the twenty. My first trip to the shoe, Texas Christian Ferguson carried the ball. What year was that? I have no clue. No idea. TCU, Ferguson carried the ball. I mean, they played TCU. That was in Dallas, <laughs> though, when when, uh, when when Nick got hurt. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know, but do want to get a quick word from our partner. I can look it up then. All right, we'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. The Super Bowl's over. Football season is in the past. And now it's on to basketball season. And if you haven't done it yet, you got to go check out Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports. If you don't, I love fantasy sports. I love putting a little money on it. There's the perfect tool, the best in the country, in the world, is Prize Picks. Basketball season's here. It's time to be pick pick a couple players and pick a couple of their stats, maybe rebounds, three pointers, points, assists, whatever you want, and and just project more or less. And when you do it, you put them all together. You can win up to twenty five times your money. Massive payouts at Prize Picks, and my favorite part about Prize Picks is an injury can't screw you. If you put some money on Kevin Durant, and in the first half he breaks his shoelace and doesn't play in the second half, your whole pick gets rebooted. You don't lose. It's a beautiful thing. It's the only daily fantasy sports out there that does this. If your player gets hurt, you can't lose. You can win up to twenty-five times your money. All you got to do. Is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use code menace to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's free money, Menace Army. And you know what I say? Don't ever turn down free money. Go check it out at Prize Picks now. And we're back. We're back at it. Um, Clemson, more insight onto the into the lawsuit, the timing of it, how quickly they went to join, you know, or actually they weren't really that quick to join Florida State until after the revenue thing. Got, got situated. So, backstory. Last week, the Big Ten and SEC put together a proposal for, you know, the amount of money <laughs> that each conference would get for a playoff berth or during, like, the, the, the playoff TV contracts. And the Big Ten and SEC are getting the biggest amount, equal amount. And then ACC, Big 12, are getting a significantly less amount. ACC accepted the deal in a heartbeat. They said, we got it. Then the following week, it came out that Clemson and Florida State are both suing the ACC to get out of their grant of rights. They're trying to get out for zero, zero dollars, because it's like over a hundred million dollars to get out. Yeah. And here's what their argument is: what the ACC has done in the last year has is hindering their ability to compete at the highest level of college football. And they're not wrong. If your revenue gets cut, you can't spend as much on recruiting budgets, on facilities, on all these things. So they're saying it's critically important to Clemson, to us that we are able to compete at the highest level of college football, and the conference is now hindering our ability to do that. And so we want out of this deal. The deal was we would sign this grant of rights for this TV contract, and we would be an equal opportunity conference comparatively to the SEC, Big Ten, everybody. And now, with the ACC's failure to add other teams and their acceptance of the lower percentage of the payout, they fucked the deal. Mm -hmm. they 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 got out of it they didn't hold up their end of the bargain so they want out for nothing <laughs> yeah and, and one of the main principles in the grant of rights was you know advancement of the conference to yeah. remain at the forefront of college athletics and they feel like that has directly been violated mm -hmm. and so maybe they have a case now i don't know if these clemson lawyers got it but i'm sorry for talking shit about them because it sounds like they got something i mean at least a little bit of something i, I don't we don't know that right i mean they they, they, they know how to file a lawsuit. Yeah, a lawsuit. Well, we, we'll just send them papers into that judge, and then it, we, we'll take their ass to court. Mm -hmm. And it's good. They're making it about the kids. Yeah. That's what it is. Like, the, the, the it sounds like Cle or Clemson's stance. And Clemson, for as 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 weird they, as they've been, they've always done a pretty good job when it comes to kids, at least. Like, the kids liking the program. Yeah. And so, it's like... Except for the time that, that one coach... <laughs> Was saying the N word. Yeah, the tight end they coach. Didn't like, they saying, didn't like that that much. Yeah, saying the N word was was crazy. Um, but optically, they do a good job of making it feel like a family environment. Mm -hmm. I guess racist family. Who knows? <laughs> um, but they said that the ACC can no longer can 
basically protect the advancement of their kids. Yeah. And that's and that's the big thing. Like you said, do you do you think it's gonna work? Do you think they'll get I out for free or they're gonna end up having to pay their way? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. We should probably get my guy Dan Lust on to explain it to us, but they they got a point. I don't know how it's gonna hold up legally. Mm -hmm. And it just all, all that matters is did the ACC legally not hold up their end of the bargain to the contract, what it says, the verbiage, right? Because you could be like, oh, they're fucking us. And it's like, okay. Did Where you? in this contract does it say they can't fuck you? <laughs> like, so, I mean, I agree, but like you signed a contract and it doesn't say they have to add teams or have to get equal revenue. Like, I don't know that I'd have to get a lawyer to read the contract, but I'd be a terrible judge, bro. I, I would know. imagine. Yeah, me too. I'd be like, fuck yeah, this is absolutely true. You're out. <laughs> you can get out. They'd be like, but the contract, fuck the contract. You guys suck. <laughs> I think what's going to happen? I'm going to have to go to court. I'm the judge, bitch. I'm the judge. <laughs> it, it's, I can't even think about predicting the, the legal outcome but you would think these lawyers after preparing this they are lawyers they should mm -hmm. know that that they have a chance like legally they have grounds to stand on i hear you and i'm gonna push back a little bit just for the sake of discussion dog i think the acc doesn't have or like clemson and florida state don't have shit i, I kind of agree and that's why this is their last ditch effort you know why i think they don't have shit because remember about a year ago People from the Florida State, the Magnificent Seven, their side said, oh, there's major holes in the grant of rights. Oh, we know a way we can get out. In fact, we're not even worried about the grant of rights at all. I think they did that thinking, oh, we can scare the ACC into giving us a discount. ACC didn't budge. And now here we are back to the grant of rights. Like, Well, I mean, they talked that shit. And they now they're did. trying to back it up at least. Well, they talk that shit saying they're not worried. They know they know a way to get out. Like they even had fucking ADs and presidents saying no, that. No, I know, but I'm saying this is their way to get. You got to take. They're gonna have to take them to court no matter what. Mm -hmm. So they're at least trying to back up what they said. Yeah, I'll be bad. We'll shit, see bro. if it works. When I'm just thinking about all the smart schools, I guess in the ACC, like something tells me like Duke lawyers probably a little better than Clemson lawyers. You know, <laughs> and like the only other people that get to join Florida State in this big lawsuit thing. Is the it's, dummy in the corner? ACC up 50 going into the fourth oh quarter, my bro. God, I'm dude. saying, like, you couldn't get, like, if a Georgia Tech lawyer, I don't even know if they have fucking law school there. If a Georgia Tech lawyer was like, yeah, we can get out of this. I'm like, oh, those are smart people. Got it. Yeah. Round it up. It, the ACC's going but, down. But, Chris, keep in mind. And this is just me being fucking ridiculous. I know. Duke and Georgia Tech are just trying not to make any waves because <laughs> they're in a Power Five conference right now. They they're, are. they're looking at what happened to Oregon State and Washington State, like, the lawyers came. Hey, we can, we can get out of here. You shut your fucking mouth. Go back to your lawyer office and you don't come in here and don't say anything. Don't tell anyone that. Like They're like, do not bring attention to us. We're just trying to sit in the corner and remain in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I agree with you. For, not Georgia Tech, though. They'll, they'll find a home in a power five. Probably. but Just because of Atlanta. Not because of anything that, that is a, as an athletic power. Yeah, but Duke? <laughs> Well, basketball yeah. is going to hold them. Duke hoops. But and lacrosse. Shout out to Duke lacrosse team. Got a really good history. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, remember they hired that one stripper and she she tried oh, to, she took them all, like, got them all, the whole team oh, banned. Yeah. Because they sexually assaulted her, which really didn't happen. She was just doing her job. Just doing, I mean, they, and they were enjoying her job. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the dancers. This all comes out, all this lost to stuff comes out the day that ESPN and the College Football Playoff officially announced their extension through the 2032 season, $1.3 billion annually. Crazy. Dog. It's crazy amount of money. And the Big Ten and SEC are looking at it like, damn, right. we get a lion's share. Oh, yeah. And those players are like, when is revenue share coming? <laughs> Like, there's so much money in this sport. That's why I miss me with the bullshit. Oh, Ryan couldn't afford Tony Alvarez. Yes, everyone can afford everything. They're mm -hmm. so loaded, so much money. Like, $1.3 just for the playoffs? <laughs> Wild. So it's, what, six games? Yeah. That's I mean, it's more than that, but. Yeah. Ah, six real games. <laughs> six real games. Well, you got four, then four is eight. Right, then you get two more is ten, then one more. There's eleven games, six. Ah, uh, just a couple hundred, just a hundred over a hundred million per game. That's wild. <laughs> the first conference to issue a statement after that they announced. It. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing. The pack. Stop calling yourself the Pac-12. 
There's only two of you motherfuckers. Your name is not the Pac-12 anymore. And I know we don't count numbers. The Big Ten has like 18 teams. That's why the SEC, I'm, I'm down with that. Just give it a name without yeah. numbers. Because, But the Pac-12 is like, dude, you can't call yourself the Pac-12. You got two. The Pac-12 announced that they are pleased with the college football playoff will continue to grow as an incredible sporting event for our student athletes. The new agreement to continue on ESPN platforms provides excellent exposure and opportunity for Oregon State and Washington State football programs to succeed on the biggest stage in all college sports. First of all, they're not going to be on the stage ever. <laughs> Like the pack, I love the Pac-12. I do too. I really do because they're like so clueless. They still call themselves the Pac-12, saying that Oregon State, and then like just admitted, like yeah, we're a two-team conference, not like exposure and opportunities for the Pac-12 teams. No, they said ah, we only have two. We can just put them by name in there. Like it's just pure comedy. I love it, man. That poor, I love it. That poor woman that took over. <laughs> it's over, man. She, she was sitting there and she was like, you know what, guys, we should thank them. We should, can we send a thank you card? I'm so proud of them. They did a good, good job, ESPN and playoffs. <laughs> Bro, here's the thing. If the Pac-12 makes the playoff any year, they walk away with more money than anybody because each of those two schools split the 30%. <laughs> It's not like the Big Ten and SEC where they got to split that percentage amongst all of them. Yeah. It's just two of them. They make it in. They're good you, forever. You know what they really should do? They really should have a, an, an annual meeting after spring ball, watch film together, and say, all right, these 10 players are going to transfer to, to the other school. school. Like, create an A and B team. <laughs> then maybe you got a shot. Look, all they got to do is make it to the playoffs and they get part of that $1.3 billion and they don't have to split it with the whole conference? Come on, bro. It ain't happening, though. <laughs> I want it to happen, though. But really if they do. Maybe. Here's what they should do. The other thing. I think my other idea is great. Like, elite idea. Here's the other thing they should do. Take out a massive loan. <laughs> massive. I'm talking, like, $200 million. Put it all into NIL. And just, I mean, offer lucrative contracts to the top, all the five stars. Yeah. And then... If you make the playoffs, cash that check, buddy. Immediately. You're set forever. Forever. Oh, my God. I'm just saying. I am getting everybody. Everybody. Like, like oh, they offered you $2 million a year? We'll give you 20 Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm literally offering first-round money right I'm, then and there. I'm just saying. Are you kidding me? And then I might make Kirby Smart say no to $50 million a year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're we're really in silly season right now. Uh, we are, but it's a good idea, right? It's a great idea. Fuck it, you only got to split it with one team. Yeah, it's a big check, big big check. <laughs> um, USC is this is this newsworthy, Zach? USC their average spring weight in the trenches is up twenty pounds in defensive line, defensive end, and offensive line from last year to this year. Average weight as they're getting ready for the Big Ten. I found it interesting from um, fight on Rusty over there at USC. Is this of note? Is this important? So, so what they did was they compared the average weight of the defensive line in 2023 spring compared to this spring when they showed up for spring. And the defensive line went from 273 to over 300 on average. They're absolutely prepping for smash mouth Big Ten football. Now, I don't know if they know how to play that, <laughs> but they're going to be bigger. <laughs> I, I I like it. That's like, damn, okay. Like, they're not just going to come in here and try to run this little Pac-12 defense, like Pac-12, you know, trenches. Like, we got it. I mean, it's real Big Ten, real Midwest football. I think late in the year, they'll find they'll have to run the ball a lot more than they're used to. Um, and, and they're making you, the adjustment. They fucking turned on that national championship game, watched Michigan running the ball, watched those D tackles, and it was an immediate phone call to the strength coach like, yo, big. We need them big, like really fucking big. Yeah. Call the Royd guy. Right. Get 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 that guy from Bar that Barry Bonds used. Get him over here. The Mark <laughs> McGuire guy, get him over here. Yeah. He's got to be in LA. Get him to the facility now. Yeah, literally, like whoever Michael B. Jordan used for the like everybody. Oh, all, yes. all the all the air the, the steroid guys get him in the building. Yes. But shout out to them. That's that's some real trench warfare, and I'm excited to see um Definitely, if it works. I do want to get some Super Chat, Zach, and then talk. We got Caden Proctor talk and Ohio State talk coming up after the break. Yeah. But it. not not break right now. My bad. I'm tripping. No. 
tripping, tripping, tripping. Um, Shane, thanks for the five. Welcome back, Shane. Zach, there's a lot back on defense. Seven starters played most of the game in the Natty return. Graham, KG, Stewart, Moore, Page, and Hosman, plus the Maryland linebacker transfer, top three defense in 2024. Yeah, I mean, having seven back is, I mean, it's, that's a, that's good. Especially for a natty team. Like, yeah, no, it's really good. But I'm just saying you lost a lot too. And, mm -hmm. and that's, you didn't lose everybody. That's for sure. And I highlighted it all night last night. But uh, the other lie that Michigan, Michigan fans told is, was it in Keon Saab? Yeah. There's a dude. I he, like him a lot. He started and played the whole game and he's a great player. So don't listen. I was the one who was like, yeah, hey, he's a backup. No, the fuck he, he was good. He is a really good player. Dude, I, I love that kid. He is a like, I'm not gonna say great because I don't throw that around. I, I don't use that term loosely, but he's a really good player. That that's a fact. I was surprised that that they were excited, not excited, but almost like, oh, he's well, now you see it all the time. Yeah, all the time. I mean, shit, like Michigan fans were slamming Tony Alford, and now he's the best running back coach in the country. Ohio State fans just were talking about he was the best in the country, and, and now, now he sucks. A, a, a full pack of ass. Yeah. I love, I love when things uh, move around like that. T. Smitty, thanks for the 10. Saban was right. Proctor hit Bama with the hey, big head text. <laughs> Bama trolls got the Ohio State collective to give downs more cash. Since Alabama is playing dirty too, guardrails will magically appear. Caleb Downs is going to play for the Buckeyes. But... Mm -hmm. Tim, this is crazy. Austin Board is built for the BBC. Oh, my God. Uh, why did he do that, bro? I mean, I don't – I'm not fond of Austin Ward, but I'm not going to go that far. Know, Good God. Also, that's an insult to, to the people, to my to my gang. Like, Austin Ward is not built for the BBC. <laughs> a black man's fucking Austin is Ward. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Don, thank you for becoming a member. Another legend added to Weird the list. Weird things that we end up talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like, today on Menace of Sports, who is built for the BBC? <laughs> Brett, Sean, Brett McMurphy definitely is. No, he's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Both for the BWC. Sean, thanks for the 10. JJ is the third pick. Not an elite athlete, unproven pocket passer. He's an elite hander offer of the ball with some escapability and traits. From is he better than Honda to first round pick in four months. I'm with you. It's draft silly season, but I do like him. I mean, he has a lot of lot of tools. Cam, thanks for the 10. Glad my little brother is now a member of the Army. Let's go. Shout out your little brother. Um, thanks for becoming a member of the legend in the group. Shane, thanks for the two. Watched one year New York Giants only team uttered by Chris Drew until now. You ain't been watching close enough. <laughs> no, you have, Shane, and you're right. It's not my fault. Y'all be falling for them deep fake AI videos. <laughs> DG, thanks for the five. Who the hell is Daryl St. Clair and why have I never heard of him? Allegedly ran a 4 3 40 at Ohio State's Pro Day. I miss speed and space. Who the fuck is that? Oh, I don't know who that is. He ran a 4 3 at the Ohio State Pro Day? Daryl Sinclair? Yeah. I have no idea who it is. Dog, that's fast, fast. Oh, how Dominican. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, the Ohio Dominican kids do usually come over. And yeah, so he's a 5'10", 185 DB from Ohio Dominican. He played at Austin P for one year, appeared in eight games, collected four tackles. At Ohio State, played four years, appeared in five games. So he must have been a former walk-on. Oh, wow. That, that played this last year at Ohio Dominican. So they, they must know him really well. He's from Solon. Yeah. Fast as shit, clearly. <laughs> Clearly, you can run. Can he return punts and kicks? <laughs> right. Where were you? Chris, my guy, thanks for the five. Cleveland Heights is black and gold already. We good on colors, but Chris for show need the blue. He's not a Steelers fan. We remember, dog. How are y'all going to tell me what I am? You know what I'm saying? Because we know. Just That's saying, why. Because you're – I. it's all the way over there, but I would put the big cap on. Several saying, times saying like how in the world with Caitlyn Jenner are y'all going to tell me what I am? Because I know what Caitlyn Jenner is too. A man. A beautiful mother. <laughs> a beautiful mother. What the fuck is wrong with you? Jason? Thanks for the five. <laughs> Zach and Chris, what do you think about Jerry Judy three-year extension? High risk, high reward. I think it's great. I don't know where, yeah. where you're at with it. I do. I, I still believe in Jerry Judy. I mean, and granted, 
I have rose colored glasses on because I recruited him. I loved him as a prospect. I thought he was outstanding at Bama. I just can't imagine he's a bust because I've seen it in person. He came to camp as a freshman. I was his first offer. I offered him as a 14 year old, which I never did, but he was out there running routes with Calvin Ridley and, and, and a couple other players from South Florida in the Woody. And I was like, yo, who the fuck is this young kid? Here's why it's good because it's $58 million over three years. Obviously, um, in the NFL nowadays, you can just pay people's whatever's up front and get rid of the cap hit on the back end if that's the case. Additionally, if he has a really big time year, he'll be commanding $25 million a year. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you can get him now locked in for three, <laughs> you'll take it. Um, the, the elite wide receivers that are all up over 1,300 yards are all going to command between 28 and $33 million a year, probably as soon as the market gets reset with Justin Jefferson. So – um, you take it. Anytime you can extend somebody that has upside, you always do it. And, and if he's not, that's the Browns move. Just blow cash on somebody who's not that good. <laughs> right. And and honestly, like after Christian Kirk got 90 million, anything's possible. We're in the KG. <laughs> uh, but do want to get a quick word from our partner, Zach. All right. Quick commercial break. And then we'll be back after this. All right, Menace Army. As we're on this fitness journey, there's a big part of getting being the best version of you. And I found it. We got it. They sent me a bunch of meals. I've already tried it, tested it. It is menace approved. That is called Factor. Factor meals are two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with their restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. They have snacks, smoothies, all kinds of stuff. You can get anywhere from 6 to 18 meals a week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. It's a must-try for the Menace Army. The Menace Army. As we go down this path towards the best version of us head to factormeals.com slash menace and use code menace 50 to get 50 percent off that's code menace 50 at factormeals.com slash menace 50 to get 50 percent off and start these easy meals that are nutritious and healthy and it will help you be the best version of you go check them out there you go we are back we so are back I just want to touch on it real quick. Caden Proctor is going to re-enter the transfer portal. He uh, obviously transferred to Iowa, admitted in 4K to tampering with Iowa during a great time at a, at a basketball game, and now he's headed back. Zach, just want to let you have a chance to sound off. What I think happened, his ex-girlfriend's back home at Iowa. He missed her. He transfers back January 20th, committed to Iowa. Funny, March 20th, two months later, he's like, yeah, that pussy wasn't that good. <laughs> I'm going back to Bama. <laughs> That's what I think happened. No, what I really, I mean, it's it's wild that this is college football. He went back to Iowa and realized, you know what? I was right out of high school. Bama is way better than this place. For real, bro. Like, of all the, I mean, here's the thing. He's a guy that could have went anywhere in the country. Like that's how that's how good he was. Um, obviously, when you hit the portal, tackles are hard to come by, and mm -hmm. one that started a whole year in the SEC is, is hard to come by. I mean, to go from absolutely winning culture to absolutely, I don't know if we're going to score more than three points today. Culture is in fucking sane. Yeah, it is. It's here, this is what happened. The kid went to Bama. Obviously, everything was great, other than the fact he was probably homesick. Mm -hmm. He's a freshman, away from his family, and he thought, you know what, I can do this anywhere. Why not do it at home? And then he went home and he was like, homesickness cured. I got the anecdote. This place sucks. I'm going back to Bama. He got away sick. He got away sick. <laughs> what a world. He now he didn't, I guess he didn't officially announce he was coming back to Bama, but he put the I'm back with the Jordan on his uh, on his on his story. Uh, but it also it's like it's also like a new experience, right? Like the Bama I left was not the Bama now. It's it's yeah. super different. So shout out, shout out to him. Um for him this year, obviously, he's going to have a big year. He thinks he's going to be a lottery pick, so that's massive. Yeah. And I, th I think this spring transfer portal window is about to be wild. But did you see what Josh Pate said? Yeah. Oh, my God. Josh Pate said, Caden Proctor returning to Bama isn't even one of the top three wildest portal rumblings I've heard this week. And that man's plugged in. Yeah, Judkins back to Ole Miss. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that would be something. I wonder how Ole Miss fans would take that. Um, I, I was going to let you – dunk on anybody for the Caleb Downs stuff. Caleb Downs going back to Bama, too? Absolutely not. Caleb Downs is playing for the Buckeyes. People really – I mean, he was trending nationally yesterday, his name. Because one one kid that transferred out coming back, and now they're going to talk about the other one coming back. Yeah. But nobody said shit about Seth McLaughlin, Seth McFarland. 
Seth. We like Seth. Um, it is funny because, like, right now, the quote that Saban gave last week is hitting just because, obviously, the Caden Proctor stuff. All the things I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. They sure don't. You fucked around and found out. I said it when we started the show. They better figure this shit out. These kids eventually are going to start making money. Mm-hmm. Now, adding the transfer portal at the same time was top five dumbest things I've ever heard. Like, oh, we're going to allow them to get paid. And transfer wherever they want, whenever they want. Like, what? You just, I mean, just, it's wild. Yeah, I'm holding out or I'm going back to Bama. Yeah. Do you think Saban would have taken him back if Saban was still the coach at Bama? Probably. You think he would have, really? Probably. Huh. I mean, this kid's this is a great player. Just, like, is he that good? Like, he's, he's a okay. great player. Yeah, all right, I believe uh, you. I'd be like, huh? We're going to have to work out our issues in this marriage, but I'll still stay married to you. Good. Or I'll, I'll get remarried, I guess. Remarried. Re-up. Good or bad move by the foundation responding to the Caleb Downs rumors saying our student athlete partner Caleb Downs is locked in and ready for a big year. Go Bucks with the link to their with their thing. <coughs> they get it for both sides. Like half people are like, damn, the Twitter rumors really made you post this. The other half is like right. trolls got you to go. give him more money. Right. Which I don't I doubt they did give him more money, but it's 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 good marketing, I guess. Good marketing. Um, Ohio State. Some news on that front. I want to start with the running back kind of emergence. The candidate has been uh, DeMar- uh, DeMarco Murray. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he was there with Chip and Ryan mm-hmm. uh, for a quick sec, and it feels like he's going to interview. He's going to be a part of this interview process. It's heating up. Uh, Zach, at this point, when the news breaks and is being reported that a running back coach at another Power 5 job, his alma mater's job, is coming up to interview. Yeah. Is it over? I mean, it's. I, I don't know that it's over. It's, it's Brett Venable is the only one that can pull the plug on that. And I, if if Demarco Murray is that good, then he won't. He'll he'll maybe negotiate with him, maybe give him a raise, try to convince him to stay. But the reality is this: like I know Tony Alford didn't like his contract because he wanted the the, I guess the comfort with a multi year deal, the 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 security of a multi year deal, which Ryan didn't give him. But you look at like Robert Gillespie at Bama, who's regarded as one of the best running back coaches in the country. He makes six twenty five a year, right? I don't know what Demarco Murray makes. I didn't look it up, but he probably makes around that too. You're offering eight hundred grand. That's two hundred thousand dollars more. Like money talks now. Yeah. Market resetters. Ohio State has the money to be a market resetter. Especially, I mean, you're going to give a running back coach almost seven figures with a bowl bonus, pushing nine hundred nine fifty. That's a shitload of money for just a running backs coach. Like, and I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure Oklahoma can print money like Ohio State can. Maybe not as well, but they could offer him the, uh, to, a match. But same reason why Lincoln Riley went to USC. It's that money. Money talks. Shout out Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Like, DeMarco Murray's like, yo, I love this place. I don't want to leave, but show me the money. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't think DeMarco Murray last year was in the was in the. I oh know he's number four, making six fifteen at Oklahoma. Right, six fifteen. Yeah, Ryan can give him eight hundred right now. It's almost two hundred grand more. I mean, honestly, if they wanted to, and I don't, I don't know if they will, they do have the money to make him the highest paid running back coach in the country right now. That's Frank Wilson sitting there nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a fuck ton for a running back coach. Dog. A ton, and you know, it's not even factored in a bowl bonus, which is usually like anywhere from one to three months salary. Yeah, that's that's nuts. That's nuts. nuts. Um, it does sound like to me he'll be the next running back coach at Ohio State. Um, that's actually a, a massive pull and kind of speaks to what, I mean, money talks and also leaving your alma mater feels like a big deal because, I mean, that'd be like what? Like Brian Hartline leaving for an LSU for more money? Yeah. I mean, if, if yeah, absolutely. That's what it's like. So um, that's that's big time, big time for them, big time for him. Um, would do you wor- would you worry at all about DeMarco Murray, the recruiter? Like, obviously, he has been coaching for that long. If you look at his top 247 uh, recruits that he's landed, none of them are, like, signature players. None of them are stars, but he is a younger coach. Listen, um, he's a young guy with a name. If he's got charisma, he's got a personality, he can relate to kids, he's got to have a different logo on that chest. And it it hits different than Oklahoma. I don't give a fuck if you're an Oklahoma fan. Mm-hmm. It, that, the block O hits different. It really does. Um I don't think o- Oklahoma is that far off as far as the brand, but it is different. And so, who would like who would have thought Brian Hartline would be probably the best recruiter in the country when he'd never recruited before? Nobody. But he has the charisma. He has the personality. He can relate to kids. He's got the perfect offense to sell. 
and he's really fucking good. So he is. But his first year, everyone in the world was like, well, I don't know if he can recruit. <laughs> Answered that question. <laughs> Flying fucking colors. Flying Sorry. colors. Like, put together some ridiculous classes. And going wire to wire for Jeremiah Smith. Oh, yeah. Still one of the most ridiculous oh. recruiting jobs ever. Ever. Um, do you know enough about DeMarco Murray to say this would be an upgrade over Tony Alford? No. Nobody does. I mean, Ryan's going to try to feel that out in in the interview, but I don't think I don't think it's going to be a fall off, especially with the room they have. I don't give a shit if he's not as good as Tony Alford. They'll still be, he'll still be good enough at least this year, and he'll be able to name his price after this year too. Eh, I don't think so. He's walking into a fucking a ta- the Taj Mahal, and everyone knows that. Do you think this running back duo will have more yards than the nineteen duo? Probably, considering the quarterback situation. You think they will have more yards? Mm-hmm. So the the duo in 19 had 2,800 yards. Yeah, I think they will. That's so many fucking yards. It is, but I think with the quarterback situation, they're going to they're gonna be more reliant on the run game than they ever have been. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to turn into Michigan, mm-hmm. but I think they're going to run the ball slightly more than they have. Because why wouldn't you? No matter who you put at quarterback, Devin Brown, Will Howard, fucking Julian Sayan is... They're not going to be better throwing the football than those two backs are running it. Now, you're going to do both, right? Ryan still likes to throw the ball, but they're just going to, I think you're going to have a slight uptick in carries. And I think these two are better than the 19 duo. Yeah. Well, the 19 duo, it, it's a little crazy because like, like Master had 800 and then JK had 2,000. Yeah. Right. So you see, so do you think they'll rush for more yards as a team than that 19 team? Yeah. Wow. That 19 team had like 3,300 yards. But you're also adding in two quarterbacks that can run. They yeah. can scramble. And with Chip Kelly's run game, I'm just saying, if you add in the quarterback to that miss, I think I think this is a 3,500-yard-plus season on the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great question for the chat. I, I mean, you, you, you're you pretty convinced. I so, don't... Will, will, here's a question for the chat. Will Ohio State rush for more than 3,300 yards this year as a team? I also think, Chris, they're going to be so good – that they're going to be up on some of these inferior opponents and just pound the fucking ball. Well, I mean, that, that's what that 19 team did. Absolutely. Too. I mean, they were up on literally. And I think Dallin Hayden is the third back, and he's far better than Master Teague. Oh, I agree. So you're getting to your threes, and he's better than the two in 2019. I wish I knew enough to comment on that offensive line in 19. They, yeah, they, I'd they, have to look at it because I knew those kids. That was a year after I got fired. Yeah, I just I just can't remember who was starting where and and, yeah. and, and what matters. Um, Ryan Day had some interesting comments, kind of gave some thoughts, some 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 takes on the wide receivers. <clears throat> A couple of cliff notes: Brandon Innes is tough, different kind of player. Uh, Bryson Rogers is stepping up. Jaden Ballard still needs to step up. Jeremiah Smith has had his moments, and Carnell Tate had a really good offseason. Sky is the limit. Your takeaways from those comments? I mean, that's absolutely what I would have predicted. Bra- I'm Brandon- surprised on the Ballard comment. I why needs to step up? Because damn, if he needs to step up as a senior, it's over, big I know, fella. It is. What do you mean? Damn, they still need him. There's no Jaden Ballard is not going to play, guys. I wish he would. I love Maslin. I love Nate Moore. I love I love Jaden Ballard. I, I'm the one that offered him. I love him. So I just he's he just doesn't have it. I guess. So Brandon Ennis, we knew he was going to be a fucking dude. Yeah. Coming from American Heritage, I was never worried about. He was my favorite receiver in the, in the class. You know that. Carnell Tate, a dude. We saw him last year. And we heard Denzel Burke on Chris's Twitch stream talking about he should have played last year. Like, yeah. played more. This is not surprising. Jeremiah Smith, flashing. Well, no shit. Like, this is, I wasn't surprised by any of this. This is what I would have predicted. I think I, maybe not surprised, but maybe a little disappointed because I, I, I would have hoped that, like, with Fleming and Marv leaving for Ballard, all you got to do is buy the fuck in and step up yeah. for the next couple months and you can rewrite your entire story yeah. at Ohio State with one good year. Also, on the Twitch stream, I think that me and Denzel <laughs> are going to have a, a spring ball Twitch stream tonight. Oh, there you go. It's six. I, I, I've yet to confirm it, but uh, it's looking that way. So be on the lookout for a, a link to watch Chris get beat down by Denzel Burke, Robin, but also some great Ohio State conversation. Rob been practicing like, on a look. Okay. I'll be getting ready. Now, I, I don't think I'm – I'm not predicting a win, but – the triple, like the wishbone, the pistol wishbone with a go, a curl, 
and a drag on the other side of it confuses the fuck out of the computer on Matt. <laughs> so just saying now. Just All right. saying now. We'll so, see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes that. possibly tonight. Yeah. Um, he talked about Carson Hinsman a little bit too, and Seth McLaughlin. And honestly, Ryan Day kind of blamed Milro for the McLaughlin snap issues, saying that there was a cadence issue, and that's what led to the bad snaps. Does that is that happen with? I mean, I guess it could. I don't see how. Like, how does a cadence issue <laughs> result in you rolling the ball back? Cadence issues, maybe you snap it when you're not supposed to, or early, or before, or after. But like. When you snap it, you should still fucking snap it. Like what he told him, like, oh, if, if I if it's on one, I need you to roll that bitch back there. No, what, what are we talking about? I don't know much about offensive line or center play, but I did find it funny because it was almost like Ryan Day was just getting one more little diss off to Tommy Reese. <laughs> Tommy Reese can't teach your fucking quarterbacks how to get the cadences right, and that was Seth's problem. Well, the moral story is the kid obviously struggled snapping it. Whatever reason you want to come up with, the most important thing he said is, we have not had any snap issues this spring so far with either of our centers. That's all I need to hear. But it's also not, not the college football playoffs. So you might when it's a heated game, like big stage, but you also might not. I mean, the kid started center for forever at Bama. And he snapped the ball just fine most of the time. He struggled that day. I don't know why. I guess he struggled the back half of last year. Was yeah. kind of was kind of the bigger issue. What do they call that? The yips or something? The yips. The yippers. Um, so shout out to them. I mean, honestly, one of the most underrated battles is going to be Seth McLaughlin versus Carson Hinsman. Was Carson really bad last year? Um, pretty bad. Okay. Well, I that's why I asked. he wasn't. He wasn't really bad. Ohio State should have better on the field. And I'm not saying him as a player. Just his performance last year. He wasn't ready yet. And he had to be the center. It was wild, though, because, like, I thought Carson Hinsman was like, yeah, you know, a, a C player last year for Ohio State. But then in the bowl game, I was like, damn, I wish Carson was out there. Yeah. I'm like, good. I wish Carson was snapping the ball because Matt Jones could not do it. Like, could not do it. Oh, uh, this one, last thing for you before I want to get some Super Chats. Uh, <laughs> Greg McElroy. Florida in 2024, don't sleep on the Gators. Yeah, fucking idiot. Everyone's basically putting Florida in the ground. They're burying them, and they're saying they have no chance here in 2024. Guys, it's still the Florida Gators. They still play the whole AFC. <laughs> like, they have the hardest schedule in college football by a mile. It, they are buried. I'm, I, I dug the hole. They're my alma mater. I graduated from Florida. I would love for them to be good. They're going to be so fucking bad. I feel like we talk about their schedule so much, but people keep getting in front of a camera and talking about how they're going to be good. This is their November alone. November's a, I mean, it's over. Georgia, Texas, at Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, F Florida State. That's five straight losses. <laughs> Even if they get one upset, that's one in four in your last in, in your last five games. That's four playoff teams. Yeah, possibly, yeah. That's four playoff teams in a five-week stretch. It's nuts. Come on, bro. Yeah, it's nuts. I, I, It's over. Over. It's over. Um, when it's a Super Chat, Zach, and then get to, to a quick word from our partner. Patriot, thanks for the five, Zach. You need to give a quick class on how to join using iPhone. Well, we don't I, know how to join. Yeah, we don't know how. I can't, can't teach a class on a subject. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'll look into it. I, I don't I, – I couldn't figure it. I couldn't find a way. But if you go to your desktop, you go to a PC, you can do it there. I will find out. I, I might even shoot a link out on Twitter or something. I, I don't know how to do it, but I will find out. Yeah, well, one way or another. We'll put that's what we'll do. We'll put a we'll put a tweet out from our Menace to Sports account on Twitter after the show. There you go. There's a solution. Hopefully it works. Yep, smooth. Uh hi baby95. Thanks for the five. <laughs> what a great name. Hi baby95. <laughs> Dan, were you born in 95? I make me feel old. I mean, it would make sense. OSU grad, no, they no way. OSU grad 17, living in Florida right now. Shoe better, but the swamp is pretty legit. Yeah. Must have been better when they didn't blow. Dude, <laughs> the, the swamp when we were there, fucking insane. Like, shit's on the horseshoe by a mile. But they're fair weather. Like, it's not near as good as the horseshoe right now. Yeah. But when we were there, oh, my God. When we blocked the field goal to beat Steve Spurrier, in his return to Gainesville, that's the loudest I've ever heard anything in my entire life. All I was going to say was when they played Utah, I it chills through the screen like yeah. when it was at the Swamp, hearing the buzz. Dude, it's, it's a cool place. It really is. If you can ever see a game there. 
Um, they said live show in Florida soon as well. Yeah, I need we need to we need to do that. Well, I'd love to do a live show in Gainesville. I haven't been back since I left in two thousand. No, didn't you go to that tailgate? No, I was in Orlando. Oh, it was week zero in Orlando. I mean, I'd be down for a Florida trip, bro. Hey, when we get the bus, the bang bus is coming. We're going. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Zach, I want to get a quote from our partner and then finish out with Super Fine, Chats. Chris. We'll so do get you... your questions in. We'll do whatever fuck Chris wants. Apparently, he runs the fucking show now. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army. It's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus right now. Use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cash each. Okay. We're back. We're back. <laughs> so Chris brought up the 2019 offensive line comparatively with this this offensive line next year for Ohio State. That offensive line was Thayer Mumford at left tackle, Jonah Jackson, stud, S still a stud in the NFL at left guard, Josh Myers, stud in college for sure, Wyatt Davis, stud, and then Brandon Bowen and Nick Petit Friere at right tackle. That 19 0 line was good as hell now. Yeah, good as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking legit, legit. <laughs> Holy shit, because any one of those guys would probably be the best offensive lineman on this current team. Like, who who, who wouldn't start here? They would all start. They would all start. Mm -hmm. Thayer is definitely starting over Josh Simmons. Jonah is start. Uh, yeah, Jonah's definitely. Bro, I was going to say. Uh, Jonah's definitely starting at left guard. Josh Myers definitely starting at center. Wyatt definitely at right guard. And right tackle, Brandon Bone and Nick petit Friere weren't. I mean, Nick petit Friere was a redshirt freshman. Brandon Bone was a, a fifth year. They're definitely better than Josh Fryer. It's five. It's, it's Arby's five for five special right there. I would like someone to give me a better guard duo than Wyatt and Jonah. And mm. when you yesterday said the most important for stretch were those guards, yeah, that year stretch for two K getting out crazy that makes a ton of fucking sense. Those two guards were really really good. Really good. And it makes sense. Like, those guards are good. That's most important for stretch. That makes a lot of sense. Let me let me look. I might have one for you. I think. Guard. Oh, fuck no. Oh, yeah. So, in 2014, the starting guards were Pat Elfline and Billy Price. Two Remington Award winners. Okay. Excuse the fuck out of me. <laughs> I should have fucking known. <laughs> I should have fucking known. That's, I mean, shout out guard play. Make guard play great again. Guard plays like foreplay. It gets you going. Get you going. <laughs> if you want to come, the guard's got to be good. Got to be good. Jason, thanks for the five. My 14-year-old is homesick today. I think he just killed Kyler Murray with a headshot in the new Call of Duty. <laughs> That's insane. Insane. But he may have. I don't know. What, what do you think Kyler's up to right now? He's definitely he's on definitely the game. Definitely gaming. What do you he's mean? Definitely on the game. He's got a headset on. He's talking shit. You're a 14 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thanks for the five. Oh, shout out for the new PFP. Come on, Zach, big dog. Respectfully, it's two pack of ass. Shout out, Ron. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> and we got that from the Button Podcast. <laughs> Don, member Don, what a guy. I hate the fact that my member subscription came right after that wild ass BBC comment. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's when it came. <laughs> Member Elks, thanks for the two. Pac-12 is streaming the leaving team's spring games. <laughs> yeah, I wonder when that calendar starts and stops. I don't have any idea. Huh. Bryce, thanks for the two. Marv had his pro day last year with CJ. Mm -hmm. That's fair, too. 100 but I mean... Fair. There's been a year of growth and development and coaching, I would think. Yeah. But also, like, if routes on air are the reason 
that you picked Malik Neighbors over me, you were always going to, you were just yeah. looking for the reason. I don't want to go to your organization anyways. Right. Like, never had any problems with my cooking until you met the new girl. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, thanks for the five. Been a Bears fan for 20 years. Once Justin got traded, I officially have entered the NFL fan transfer portal. Can't take that property franchise anymore. Well, as the ambassador of the Steelers this franchise shit, no, this, friendship. Come on over to Cleveland, buddy. We got you. We're real fans. I think that you would be happy over here. I don't even know. What's the Browns record against us? It doesn't matter. Because we don't flip-flop, jump on fucking bandwagons. If we're going to suck, we're going to suck and drink a bunch of beer while we do. I am the Caden Proctor of fans. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, Big Blue Nation. <laughs> Y'all hang tight. <laughs> the Rod Farva member Rod or Anchor Rod or Wrench Rod. Thanks for the two. Wrench Rod. <laughs> the NFL may ban hip drop tackles in 2024. What are your thoughts? They should. Isn't it hard to police, though? I mean, it's hard to police, but it's like horse collar tackling. Like, it's it's dangerous. You're going to break a bunch of legs. Mm -hmm. Now, police it as best you can. Try to get it out of the game. That's one that I, I am fully on board with. Like, this, this pussy-ass targeting calls that they're overusing now, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I wonder about policing the hip drop tackle with in-game penalties. I don't know if you can do that because it is such kind of a gray area tackle sometimes it feels like. I mean, but you say that, but... They need to get rid of the egregious ones. Yeah. Okay. Like if the, the gray area ones, if it uh, might not have been, that's probably not hurting anybody. So don't flag that. It's just like what targeting should have been. Like when that receiver kind of goes like this and a safety just fucking helmet to helmet tries to take him out of the game, that's targeting. Yeah. Like when a guy goes to tackle someone low and the quarterback ducks and they hit, it's like that's not targeting. But now we're calling that targeting. Yeah, targeting should have been reserved for the, oh my God, is he going to wake up? Yeah, it's like the major right hit against Oklahoma. That's targeting. Yeah, that's like big time. <laughs> Sir, draw targeting. Like he just launched his body and helmet right into the receiver's yeah, head. Bro, he tried to take his head off. He dog. absolutely did. Like, and here, here in his interview and whatever documentary it was or podcast, when he was talking about it was so cool. I'll have to go find it. Oh, dude. He was like, I saw that ball in air and I, I, I think I could have got to it, but I was trying to send a message to their whole fucking team. That this bitch is over already. <laughs> I'm like, damn, got me chills. Dog. All kinds of I mean, Major Wright's one of my favorites, and that motherfucker can talk. That's a psycho. Yeah, he is. On the football field, and that's good. That's what you want your safety to be, right? Hell yeah. Like, because if I get hit like that, I probably will never play again. Yeah. But second of all, if I do have to play again, I'm asking if I can switch positions. Third, I'm never extending for a ball again. No. Body catcher. I'm running hitches career. and out routes. That's it. Right. <laughs> Said, we got a nine for you today, Chris. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. I'm cramping that play. Gary, thanks for the two. What's up with Sawyer? Can he be the man? I mean, he looked good in the bowl game. We've seen him look great. I watched him and Paris Johnson battle in the spring game, and he was winning just as much as Paris was. And I think Paris is a franchise Hall of Fame tackle. So, yes, he can do it. Is he going to is the question. Yeah, bro. When he... No, I, until I see footage, I'm convinced that that was actually Nick Bosa going up against Paris that yeah, freshman year because right. that spring game when he had four sacks didn't make any fucking sense. It was absurd. Yeah. Then in the in the Missouri game, when they let him line up a little bit wide. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So bring that back. Oh, here we go. Keel, thanks for the two. Billy and Pat was a crazy guard du duo. Crazy. Is that the best ever at Ohio State? I, you'd have to look through the history, but it's, I mean, two Remington Award winners. I can't imagine they ever had that at yeah. guards. You know, I'm a little racist. So, like, I just saw, like, the two black guys in 19 and thought, <laughs> you know what? Like, what? Those two white guys? No way. Nah. One of them's got to be stiff. <laughs> Neither of them was stiff. Yeah, I, know, I know. It's a, it's a joke because people think I'm racist a little bit because yeah. I talk about black history year. Oh, yeah. Which, to all who celebrate it. <laughs> Ref, thanks for the two. Who's the best receiver of the running backs? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I haven't really seen Judkin catch the ball. Yeah, me either. Trey doesn't seem like a supernatural catcher, but he I'll, caught everything. I'll ask and... Tony. I'll text him. Say, hey, who's, who's the best receiver? He'll tell me anything now. <laughs> uh, Keel, thanks for the two. Did Joey kill Decker in practices, or was it close? Uh, he kind of – I mean, Taylor held his own, but Joey won a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's the example of – you're never going to face anybody as good as me. 
until maybe year two in the NFL. Yeah. Amputee gamer legend. Thanks for coming to member. You're you're the you're the man. You're the man. Appreciate it. Zach, that's all I got for today. I love it, Menace Army. Nice little Wednesday hump day show. 2,200 people in here. 2,200 people. Like the video. Answer the pinned comment down below if you're not live. If you're live, just say what's up. I don't care. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Menace out.